What's up, everybody? And today we are cracking on with the Russia and Ukraine news. Uh, very important that we cover this. Some prediction that I've made has come true. Some other things that are really important that we need to discuss. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. We're going to use in the BBC source, like I always done. If you're wondering why I'm using this specific summer air, I've said it many times before. It's the most consistent across the full political political spectrum, okay? So that's why I'm using this as a good source. I've had a few people reach out to me for sources, but um, I've looked at a few of them and they don't seem as good. That might be just me lo looking at the right ones. Uh, I am only human at the end of the day. and I'm just trying to get the most important and the best amount of information to you guys as possible. What else? We've also got um, a map update with, a, with an update that has come true, like I said it would. And that's probably why I'm doing this. Uh, video more than anything else um i've also got a comment on the last video that i want to talk about isn't involved in the question of the day which actually i'll pull that up right now but we'll talk about that comment after so question of the day comes from direct contact lemon he says also my question is i'm guessing he commented something else i didn't see it as a marine what do you think about civilians that are joining ukraine to fight when the civilians have no combat experience I think um, when people are in dire need, they can step up, right? At the end of the day, these people who, these civilians, they're not going to be doing like military tactics of forming a line, peeling left, peeling right, making flanks, fake flanks. They're not going to be all, they're not going to be doing that. They're going to be doing guerrilla warfare, right? They're going to be shooting from buildings. They're going to be shooting from all these different places, putting down traps. That's, that's the stuff that civvies do. So, um... I wouldn't expect military competence from them, but at the same time, if you're in a if you if your home is being attacked, I understand that need, right? Like if I was living in Manchester still and Manchester was under invasion, obviously I would step up. My brother, who has no military experience, would also step up, right? Like it's it's something that just happens during these times, and sometimes you end up finding that some of the civilians that step up do have uh, fantastic skills naturally, which happens more often than you think. So thank you, contact Lem Direct Contact Lemon, for your question. If you want your question answered, leave it in the comment section down below. There is something I want to quickly mention on my previous video. And let me... Where's my keyboard? Let me get this comment up, because I think this is important to address. And the, the comment in... Um, the actual people are saying in the comment that I wouldn't address this, but I think it's important that we do address this. And I don't think you can see all that well there. But I'm going to bring it up. It's basically this comment. If you can see my thing up this way, it's this comment right here from Dymo Games. Um, where's the best place to put it? It's the top comment right here, right? It says, "How the hell do you believe?" in that without any evidence but when ukraine do something bad you just say no how and why and where have you been for the last eight years of this conflict when people were dying from nazi battalions and mercenaries in a very brutal way so there's a few comments here he says i don't think i'll listen he doesn't think i'll listen to you blah blah, blah. i'm listening i read the comments guys i read the comments all right let me address the first part. How the hell do you believe in that without any evidence, but when Ukraine do something bad, you just say no. My presumption of this is the missile when Russia said that was a Ukrainian missile um, and then Ukraine was like, nope, it's a Russian missile. I have no evidence for that, right? I, I personally have no, I've not seen the missile personally. They could throw up a picture. That picture could be propaganda, right? We, we can all guarantee that living in a different country, not being on the ground at the time in that space, I don't personally know. But what I can do, and I think this is fair, and I'm sure this person would agree with me, is I can take context from other opinions that Russia and Ukraine have given in the past where evidence has been prevalent, right, or brought forward, and make my assumption that the people who are usually lying are lying, and the people who are usually telling the truth are telling the truth. This might not be the case for this specific missile that went off. Check out last the last video for that. But... I'm extrapolating the data that I've got from previous lies from Russia and applying it to this. Does that make sense? Also, where have you been for the last eight years? Firstly, my channel hasn't been big enough to cover this type of stuff and, and make it important to give this information out for the past eight years. But if we're talking about conflicts in general, I don't think the world, and you can probably agree with this as well, the world hasn't seen um, as big of a um, showing of war like this one, right? 
And I think this goes again into why do I believe Ukraine over Russia? Uh, because by all means, the West is not innocent. And I've said this in a plethora of videos previously. The US has done war crimes. Guaranteed the US. In fact, I know the US has done war crimes. I'm sure NATO countries all over the world have done war crimes, right? We're not innocent. We're not innocent, right? But what we can do right now is we can address what's happening right this second. And from what I can see personally through online, through videos being shared on social media and stuff like that, which, by the way, everyone has a, everyone has a phone, right, for the most part. Have you noticed that there's more social media posts coming from people in Ukraine than there is from people in Russia? Granted, it's the military out there. They might not be posting that stuff. But at the same time, then Russia are not being like, look what's Ukraine look what ukraine are doing because ukraine aren't doing that like bad stuff like russia are doing russia are invading a country They're, they are invading someone else's space and there is a plethora of footage for that if you want to go back and see that why am i not covering previous things because this has this has been more pushed into our face than anything else and all i can do is is see that this is happening i made one video about the ukraine russia situation and i got a, a bunch of comments and dms saying look this has been fantastic it's really helped me i'm in the area please do more of this if i would have done a video in 2014 when crimea was being invaded or if i did and in fact i did do i if you go back i went and did an afghan video about pulling out of afghan if people would have asked me then do more current events guess what i would have been doing since then i would have been doing more current events guys okay i get told on a daily basis that these videos help the flow of information and i think the flow of information is incredibly important granted this guy did make some good points why oh why do i why am i believing ukraine over russia but i'm just extrapolating data that i've seen from the past where russia for the most part have been lying and ukraine i haven't seen as many lies i'm sure there are some there some stuff that i don't believe but at the same time Russia are the ones that have been lying out of their teeth, arresting people when they oppose their agenda, all these different things. And that's telling something. That's telling something. Um, also, he says, this person here says, I'd be surprised if he deletes yours or some other inconvenient comments soon. I don't delete comments, guys. I don't I don't delete comments. And, and I'll hold my words to that. I never delete comments. Unless it's something that's like, you know, that YouTube flags. I don't delete comments. Um, he is completely addicted to this dirty Western propaganda. Nope. Nope. Not at all. I hold the West accountable as well, my friend. Uh, the media on the territory of NATO countries are not interested in covering the war crimes that the Ukrainian army committed on the territory of Donbass in the period of 2014 to 2022. Thousands of civilians killed. They only say that what is convenient for them, total demo demon demonization demonization sorry i apologize again i've got uh issues with reading with my uh, dyslexia demonization of russia total western hypocrisy no this isn't the case this isn't the case right if there was footage out of ukrainians doing war crimes to the same extent of what you russia are doing this wouldn't be the case the world wouldn't be like what are you doing right now also, the fact that Putin has lied out of his teeth multiple times and it's been proven. This stuff has been proven, guys. You see it. You can see it, right? I think people just like to go against the West and, and don't get me wrong. The West are not the good guys here. West have done some bad things in this world for oil and for other unnecessary purposes. Got innocent people killed. They have. It's true. But right now, all we can address is the situation, the current situation. That's all I can address right now. I'm just a person sat in my home trying to cover this event to help people in the uh, area. Okay? Trying my best, guys. I'm trying my best. And if you think I'm making some good points, let me know in the comments down below. And this person, Dymo Games or Grey Skull, I love a good debate, guys. I love a good, good debate. And, and if you can rebuttal anything that I just said about my complete honesty and transparency and my... Um, awareness of um, things that have been pushed on me then let me know in the comments okay because i'm open to the conversation i genuinely am but let's get on to um i want to go over to the bbc for the summary the summary on the bbc again is has been one of the best that i've seen across the political spectrum and we need to be aware of that for propaganda as well i went into that in the last video but for the most part, there's a lot of there's a lot of headings that are very similar across the political agenda in the US. And you do not see that very often. You do not see that very often. And that's another reason why it's very easy to hold Russia accountable in this one. Very easy for that. Let's look at this. Russian troops are holding 400 people, including doctors and patients, 
like hostages inside a hospital in Maripol, the, the deputy says. Okay, um... Obviously, these are civvies. Let's hope that they get the. Let's hope that Russia are, are, are giving the uh, humanitarian aspects, of, uh, you know, the food, the water, and everything that they need. Um, why they're holding their hostage, I don't know. Um, I do know of very evil tactics that the Taliban would use in Afghan, where they would stay in a civilian place, like a school, while there are children in, and shoot out of the school so you can't bomb it. I don't know whether they're going to be doing anything like that. I'm just presuming. But we need to be very careful of situations like that. Very, very careful. Because if it is a hostage-like situation, they might start killing people. Wouldn't put it past them. Above, about, sorry, about 20,000 people were able to leave the city on Tuesday, according to a senior Ukraine official. Fantastic. Again, getting these people out of the country, getting them into housing, getting them food, water. I don't care what side you're on, as long as these civilians are okay, you're going to agree with me with that. You cannot disagree that the civilians, the women, the children, the elderly, they need food, they need shelter, they need to stay away from conflict because that is incredibly important. Okay, guys? Incredibly important. And we've noticed, we have seen, I'm going to repeat this, we have seen Russia say, look, you can leave Ukraine and escape if you want, but you got to come to Russia. That is a war crime. That is a war crime, and they should be held accountable for that, including any soldier that's pushing that agenda as well. Okay, this is important because I addressed this in yesterday's video. I wanted to know more about the talks that were going on. It looks like officials have ended the talks and are set to continue on Wednesday. I'm going to scroll down and find the actual article for that because I want to hear more about that. I want to know if there was any progression made or if it was still a bunch of crap. Ukrainian negotiator Mikhailo, Mikhailo Padolka. Podolica, Podolica, I'm so sorry, said that there are fundamental contradictions during the talks, but certainly room for compromise. Okay, that seems a little bit more promising than we, than we usually get, but we'll have to wait and see on that. They're not going to show us what's happening behind the scenes at all, but we need to find out. We need to make sure that people stop getting killed, because this is a joke. What Putin and Russia are doing is, is shocking and should be stopped. Meanwhile, Kiev Mayor Vitaly Klitschko has announced a 35-hour curf curfew in the capital, warning, warning of a difficult and dangerous moment. Okay, let's talk about these curfews a second. Um, they did one, I think it was like a week or two back for the full weekend. I get it, it's very important. Don't let anyone outside. Stay safe. My worry is that people don't have enough food to stay indoors. If you're, if you're in the US or if you're in UK or wherever in, in, a, in, a, in another country anywhere else in the world, you know how difficult it is when maybe you lose power. You know, maybe the store, the local store is shut and you can't get food and supplies. We're talking 35 hours here while there's a war going on on the streets outside. I just hope that these people can get the food they need. I don't want people starving and being choked to death and having to take Russia's advice about going to Russia. Because I'm sure all they'll do is get arrested when they get there or something. We've seen it. We've seen videos of it. So um, I just hope they can get the food and the water they need to stay safe during these lockdowns, these curfews. Russian airstrikes hit a metro station and residential building overnight, killing four people. Of course, it seems like the the going metro station. It seems like they're going for the for the evacuation areas. We know that they are there are people in the metro stations kind of um, seeking shelter. I'm wondering if that's one of the places uh, that was hit again, killing four people. Typical, typical. They've been doing this constantly, and they're going to keep doing it. They're going to strangle them until they have no food and water, or they're going to kill people until they go to Russia. It is a war crime, and it needs to be stopped. It's it's shocking. Russian journalist, and this is the one that was um, in the background of the Russian TV, has been fined after interrupting Russian state TV with a sign reading no war. I'm guessing she's probably going to be arrested for like 10 years or something, knowing Russia. They do not like people going against their agenda. And that again, that again bolsters my view that Russia are the bad guys here, even though a lot of people hate the West and think that the West are doing this. Russia are committing war crimes right now. They are committing war crimes right now and they need to be held accountable. Free speech needs to be a thing and they need to stop people who are talking out against them because it's it's it creates what's happening in Russia. You know, we're blessed to be here in, in the US and the UK, being able to say what we want, opposing people who are in office. We're able to do that and it's a good thing you can do that. It holds people accountable. Otherwise, you get people who think they're too powerful and they start trying to take countries they're not allowed to take.
Putin, looking at you. The Kremlin responds to new U.S. sanctions of several of its defense officials by barring 13 Americans from entering Russia, including President Joe Biden. I have a feeling Joe Biden had no intentions of going to Russia anytime soon. And my guess is the rest of the 13 Americans had no intentions of going to Russia anytime soon. So no surprise there. The Czech and Polish, Czech, Polish and Slavic. Slovenian uh, PMs have met with Ukrainian President Zelensky in Kiev. Okay, doesn't give us much information there, but I, don't, I do want to hear more, um, wondering if these countries are going to bolster them even more or if they're going to protect Ukrainians. I want to see what's going on there with that right there. Um, all right, let's look at some of these headlines. Um, headlines, Polish Deputy PM deploy peace mission in Ukraine. Interesting. An international peacekeeping mission with military capable should be sent to Ukraine. The leader of Poland's ruling party has suggested while on a sim symbolic trip to Kiev. I think it is necessary, it's necessary to have, pe have a peace mission, NATO possibly some wider international structure, but a mission that will be able to defend itself, which will operate in Ukraine territory. So what they're saying here is they're taking a, they're taking the page out of Russia's book where they're saying this is just a special mission. Okay. Let some Polish soldiers go in as a peacekeeping mission. Just a peacekeeping mission. If anyone's not keeping the peace, so be it. I like their idea. It's just an, it's an, it's a way of getting NATO in there. That's all it is. It's a way of getting NATO in there, which again can be very dangerous because if NATO go in there and Russia are like, why is NATO here? Before you know it, we've got World War Three. Explosions rock Kiev outskirts as capital begins 35-hour curfew. We already know about that. Sanctions could severely impact economy, EU trade chief says. Fine. Let it impact. Sanctions need to be held in place to keep these people accountable. European leaders' visit to Kiev is risky but worth it, Polish minister. Polish minister really speaking out here is very uh, interesting. Very interesting how much is, uh, is there. I'd only have seen war in films. Now I've lived it. I bet. Again, humanitarian aspects needs to be pushed more than anything. Five tips on being a refugee host, host family. Okay, uh, this is important. Anyone in Europe who wants to host refugees, take this into consideration. Be prepared for the mental impact. Obviously, people are going to be traumatized when you're letting them into the house. Find people who match your stage of life. That's important. If you've got kids, bring someone else with kids in. That's a good... That's a good uh, a good way of putting it. If you're an elderly person, bring in another elder. If you're, random, random, if you're relatively young, bring someone in your age. I like that tip. Think about ground rules. That's also important. Make yourself at home, but it is your home. Make sure that there's uh, ground rules in place. Get the GP sorted early. I've never found access to the NHS to be a problem for refugees I've helped, but you sometimes have to book an interpreter, t which takes longer. Yep. Obviously, bear that in mind that they might not speak English. Um, don't feel bad about just saying no. Yeah. If you feel like you can't do it, if you're already looking after a family member that might be ill, if you're a disabled person, if... Fly, get out of here. Get out of here. Um, if you don't think you you have the space all the time or the uh, mental space to be able to bring these people in, then it's okay to say no. It is your home. Just bear in mind what they're going through as well. Nigerian students trapped in occupied Kherson request help. 100 African students, many of them from Nigeria, are stuck in the city. We know that there's a lot of people over there stuck. Over 3 million have now fled Ukraine, says UN. Interesting. Let's look at this. 3 million. 143,000 have gone to Russia. 1,000 to Belarus. 1.8 million thereabouts have gone to Poland. 213 to Slovakia, 264,000 to Hungary, Hungary, sorry, uh, 453 to Romania, uh, I said, this is 1,000, by the way, 337,000 to Moldova. It's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, but they're going to be seeking shelter elsewhere. I don't know whether Poland are going to be able to look after 1.8 million people. They're going to have to be very careful there. Biden to visit Brussels next Thursday. Very interesting. I want to see what the outcome is of that. It won't surprise many of you that none of us are planning to planning tourist trips to Russia. None of us have bank accounts and won't be able. None of us have bank accounts and won't be able to access. So we will forge ahead. Interesting. Okay. 
Almost 30,000 evacuated from cities today, Ukrainian officials say. This is nice to see. I've been talking about making sure the humanitarian aspects of this is taking place. And it looks like that is important. This is what I want to hear right here. Right here. Talks continue tomorrow. This was at 4 p.m. British Sand and Tide, I'm guessing. Um, as of recording this, it's Tuesday, 5.40 on the 15th. And that is on uh, Central Time US. Ukraine president advisor has tweeted to say that negotiations with Russian officials will continue tomorrow. He said that there are certainly room for compromise. That's very promising, but also, you know, got to be got to be very, uh, you know, I wouldn't say pessimistic here, but we haven't really got anywhere with Russia yet, have we? A very difficult and vicious negotiation process there are fundamental contradictions but there's certainly room for compromise during the break work working subgroups will be continued all we can hope for is that they actually do get a get ahead that's all we can get and then the rest of this is about the protester 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 uh russia says it has helped evacuate civilians i bet they have all the way to their own country all right live map i wanted to bring this up and you can see I've already zoomed into Kiev here because exactly what I said in yesterday's video has come true. Exactly what I said about in yesterday's video. I said that they're going to close this spur. Look what they've done. They've closed it. I said they were going to do that. They did it. They did it. No surprise there. There's more spurs going on here, but there's a city in the middle. It wouldn't surprise me. This is my predictions again. If they do this... And take that area. Obviously, this area is probably going to be closed off. Or at least they're going to try. This area is going to slowly be taken. A lot of ground's been taken here. We did see um, there was like a spur coming down here, down the western side of Kiev. And then a spur a little bit further to the west. And it looks like they've closed that area off now. No surprise there. I'm, I'm expecting... Oh, oh, get off. I'm expecting... Before you... No, I'm going to have to refresh it. I don't know what's going on here. Um, I'm expecting... Um, Russia to do this. Obviously, I don't want them to do any of this. Kind of go down round su and, and suppress the kind of... The southern western part of Kiev where people are getting supplies. Obviously, I don't want any of this to happen. The slower this happens, the better it is. Uh, but it's happening. It is happening. We see more spurs. Look at this. They're really taking a lot of ground here down in the south. Or the southeast, should I say. Looks like they're really starting to do a lot of spurs. The spurs are taking control here. Exactly like I said. Exactly like I said. A little spur here. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, the only thing that's stopping is this city here. But what I can see kind of happening is... If they close this area off here, that isolates this country, drama this city, sorry, dramatically. And then all they have to do is this. Right? All this, yes, there's Ukrainian forces in there fighting. This will slowly but surely start becoming more and more red. Especially, look, they've got a spur down here. This will connect here and here. And they're just going to slowly take them blocks. They've done it before. And they'll do it again. Although it's a very slow process. It's surprising. They still haven't taken this area here. Which I predicted they would take a long time ago. And they haven't yet. Again. I don't want any of this to happen. I hope Ukraine pushes them back. But. They're taking ground. They are taking ground. So we need to be aware of that. And we need to be very careful of that. British intelligence. Russia is deploying its forces from as far away as the eastern region. The Pacific fleet of Armenia. Obviously, we're going to start getting mercenaries in. In fact, they're probably already in already. Um, expect this ground to be made up. They're obviously trying to take these little... Uh, there could be private airports. One there. There's one here. There's probably fighting going on around here. These airports are probably going to want to be taken by Russia, I'm sure. Um, and they're going to push around here. There's already fighting in this small little airport here. Look, this fighting right here at this airport. They're trying to strangle Kiev. And I've said this in plenty of videos. They're trying to strangle them so it stops them from getting resources. It's drastic. It sucks. And it's it's bad. But they're doing it. Again, this is another, another um, argument 
the Russia are doing the dirty here. And even though there's a lot of people watching these videos thinking, oh, no, it's the West that's doing it. Russia wouldn't be taking ground in this way if it wasn't as bad as what we're saying. It would just been it would have just been a wash across the country, right? But it's not. There's reports. Look, bombing, casualties, guarantee it. Oh, in fact, all of that. Look at that. I clicked on one tweet. One, two, three, four, five bombing right there. What's this one here? Drone footage showing a civilian being shot by Russian soldiers. There's evidence. Russia needs to be held accountable. Not just Putin, the soldiers as well. It's a joke and it should be uh, considered a war crime by the world. The world should be looking at this and being like, all right, we're done with you, Russia. Holding more sanctions and stopping them from going ahead with this. It's taking Russia way longer than they expect. And I hope they fold. I hope they fold and they're like, we can't do this. Run out of resources. It will be a glorious day if Russia, Russia get defeated. It really will. Other than that, that is the end of this update. Um, it is more. I did this one because obviously we've seen some of my predictions come true. I think that's important to prove that. Um, but again, we need to be very careful with... Um, the pushing of Russia and how far they're going to go with this. Be very careful. People who think that it is NATO that are being wrong and commenting in my comment section, it's not. Look at the evidence. The evidence is there. I'm a former British soldier. I see this stuff. I've seen this stuff. I've looked online. I've taken as much evidence as possible and I try and make... You guys know me. I don't talk politics. I do not talk politics. I, I've never shown anyone what side of the political spectrum I am except for my close friends. I don't do that. But when I see something blatant, like Russia being assholes, which they are doing, and they're killing innocent civilians, I'm going to plaster it all over the internet to prove that these people need to be held accountable. Members, you're already gone. You're already gone, members. I love you. I love you. Let me know in the comments section. I want to hear your discussion. Let me know in the comments section. I want to know what you're thinking about. Do you agree with me? Is there some parts you don't agree with me? Is there some parts you think I can cover more? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to see more live streams, let me know in the comments section down below. We can get that done as well. I just want to make a discussion, guys. I want to get this the, 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 the flow of information that's really important. Links down below to all my socials if you want to get a hold of me. Instagram, Twitter. Merch is available down below. Again, Comment, comment, comment. Like the video if you like these updates. All right? I don't usually ask for likes, likes, but if you do like these videos, pop a little cheeky like on there. Okay, guys? Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. Whatever.